Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's May 15th, 2013, and um, we are going to be talking about uh, crowdfunding um, to rethink education. I, I love that title. Um, what, what, what happened here is, and I will say this very briefly, then we'll meet some people um, as, as we go, is that a few of us started an Insight Ed campaign, or are starting, or have started, You'll hear we're at different places. So we thought we'd invite Insight Ed, a couple people from Insight Ed, to come talk about what uh, crowdfunding is all about, what Insight Ed is all about. And then as that was happening, some uh, young people who are biking across America this, uh, this summer to Rethink Education 2 um, joined us. So we, and, and I think you guys have a Kickstarter, either started or starting soon. Starting so right. soon, yeah. Okay, I I know how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, but anyway, uh, so so we thought it'd be a, a really interesting kind of uh, get together and and celebrate these different projects. And what what we started to notice, and I don't know, if David Lois, you you made this happen, or somebody made this happen, but um, all of our campaigns have this kind of similar theme of. Well, I'll let you figure it out, but it's a, a theme about listening. It's a theme about putting students in the center. It's a theme about self um, self directed learning and finding passion um, and connected learning in lots of different ways. So, uh, so I think that was kind of fun to find out that that we all have those kinds of themes in common. I'm not sure how to get started here. I, I want to kind of hold off on long introductions across the board. Um, just, but please keep in mind that people will listen to this uh, as well as view it. So as you're talking, keep introducing yourself. Say, "This is Paul again," or "This is, you know, Karen again," and 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 introduce. But could we start with Insight Ed and you guys explain what we're talking about here, Jamie and um, Peter? Peter Lindbergh Absolutely. and uh, Jamie Wood from Inside Ed. Um, who wants to yeah. jump in? Tell us what Inside Ed is and what crowd funding is in general, and then All we'll right. get more specific. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, so my name is Jamie Wood, and um, I'm one of the co-founders of Inside Ed. And uh, basically, what crowdfunding is is um, an online tool for fundraising. So that's kind of the simplest definition of it. And uh, Insight Ed focuses specifically on education. And our, our goal is to become a crowdfunding community for education that allows people to come onto the site, fund their, their projects that they're working on, and then um, become a community where they can collaborate, solve problems together, uh, find experts in the field that can help them um, get their Get their important projects built and, and created. Um, you know, basically, the our our main goal is to give educators um, the the power to create whatever they need to create to to have real learning happen, whether it's in a summer camp situation or in a classroom or or anywhere in between. Um, when when they're not able to find that um, in you know, through kind of the traditional modes of uh, like grants and um, kind of the, the more bureaucratic systems. So we want to create a grassroots system for any person to do that democratically. Jamie, you did what I asked, but I'm going to ask one more thing. Could you introduce you yourself that? a little bit more? Like, um, how did you get involved in this, and what's your okay. background a little bit? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, I started out as a sixth and seventh grade teacher, um, and I my my first teaching gig was at an expeditionary learning outward bound school in Fort Collins, Colorado. And um, since then I've been teaching college English uh, at the university level, now I'm at the community college level. And um, basically this all started, you know, I can I can kind of um, attribute a lot of this to Alan actually, Alan Burks, who's here on this call. Um, because last summer in August, um, a friend of mine, Catalina Burbank, who's another co-founder of Insight Ed, and I were talking about Alan and the work that he's he's trying to do with with Open Road, 
and um, you know, Alan and I had just come from the um, Aero Conference, the Alternative Education Resource Organization, and David was there, and uh, we we just met a lot of amazing people there, and so many of those people were trying to start um, schools and programs and build things in and outside the regular system, and just were having a hard time finding funding for it. So um, that's that's generally where this idea was born. Um, people the tools to fund good ideas. Yeah. Peter, what do you what would you like to jump in on there? Introduce yourself. Welcome to Teacher Teaching Teachers. What well, we don't hear you yet, Peter. Got to unmute. Your mic might be muted. There we go. Perfect. How's that? Can you hear me? Yep. Um, thanks very much for having us on by the way, Paul. This is great. Um, yeah, my name is Peter. I'm part of the uh, Insight Ed team along with Jamie and, and Kevalina. Um, I, um, I worked as a teacher as well. I spent about 10 years teaching uh, EFL uh, various places in Asia and, and the Middle East. And uh, most recently, my interests and passions have turned to social enterprise. Um, I recently finished uh, my MBA, and I was looking for an opportunity to do something that had a lot of social impact, and I uh, met Jamie and Kevalina late last year, and I knew right away that this was something I wanted to be involved in. Um, you know, again with my teaching background, and um, you know, just knowing that, that teaching and learning is the vehicle for such tremendous change. Um, you know, I jumped at the chance to join the team. Very cool. So let me just ask one more question, and then let me just say that I'm not going to keep asking questions this way. We want it to be a more free-flowing conversation. But um, I, let me get out of the way the question of why Inside Ed? Why not Indiegogo? Why not Kickstarter? <laughs> let's yeah. uh, let's well, jump right the, to that question. This, yeah. Absolutely. That's a great question. It's a question that we hear a lot. Yeah. And um, the, the simplest answer to that question is that, that we focus and champion um, focus on and champion education campaigns period and uh, when you when you go to Kickstarter they're focused on creative campaigns occasionally that will will be an education related campaign but not very often and um, indieGoGo has has a fairly robust education section but you'll never I would say rarely 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 see them featuring education campaigns um, on their site and so you know we are um, really focused on trying to help these education campaigns rise up, be noticed, um, and so it's it's our number one priority to get the word out just about education. And yeah. uh, you know, right now we're we're kind of in the the beta phase of our development, so which means that we're we're adding tools, we're um, you know we're fixing the site, we're redesigning things all the time. So. Um, yeah. Basically, what that means is um, that we are continually finding new ways to support education, and campaigners like David, Charlie, Alan, uh, Paul, who's going to be coming on on Friday, um, you know, all, all these different campaigners are um, are, are going to be able to give us valuable feedback and say, you know, as an educator, here's what I need in a site like this, and and we'll be able to take that to our developers. And, and use that as, as part of our design. So I think that's really important. Yeah. Let, let me add, you know, we're, we're fans of, of both Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and great things happen on those platforms, but we just really feel that the education community deserves uh, a robust crowdfunding platform dedicated just to education, and, and that's what we're here to do. Hey, I'd like to jump in. This is Charlie Cowns, the founding steward of Imagining Learning, and we have a campaign right now running on Insight Ed. And uh, I think for us, one of the beauties has been the personal attention that we got uh, all the way until, even until now, but through in preparation of our launch, which happened about four or five days ago. Um, Let's see, I applied for Imagining Learning to get on Kickstarter a few years ago and they kicked me out. 
out and said, no, you're no good, you can't. <laughs> And then uh, we were going to do Indiegogo, but I, I even wrote Indiegogo saying, where's your education community set headline, you know, setting? Because there was like, at the time, there was nothing. I don't even know if they have it now, but it just seemed really big and really impersonal and like it's up to you to really kind of make it. They just supply the bodies. And that may not be true, but that's just how it appeared to, to me. So. When David and I started to talk about it, and Jamie had been involved in our work before, we just said, oh, this is a natural. Let's just do it with Excited. And they are going to build, um, you know, people over time. But what they offered us was some, some real expertise and some really good counseling as well as, um, I think, uh, moral support on the slow days and uh, <laughs> Stuff like that. So I just want to say uh, that that part to them that we really enjoyed the relationship a lot. They have a wonderful, optimistic way of um, supporting you. So it's really great. Thanks, Charlie. You're welcome. You guys are doing. <laughs> you guys are doing really important work, and it's uh, you know one thing that Peter and I were talking about earlier today is just that um, crowdfunding isn't. Um, isn't easy and it, it takes a, a lot of planning and it takes quite frankly a lot of courage because you're going out there on a daily basis asking strangers to support something that you care deeply about and uh, you know you're, you're basically looking for people to reject you occasionally and um, <laughs> and hoping that they won't you know and it's hard so. yeah and, and and I mean by saying asking for support you're asking for support but even more directly you're asking for money, and you know that's not easy, you know, for for most of us. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so we understand that, you know, and, and we want to, you know, provide the right kind of encouragement and guidance to to make the difficulties of crowdfunding, um, you know, that you can overcome those difficulties and you know get where you need to go. Oh, can I just add a little bit here? I'm David Weitz. I'm uh, one of the uh, I'm the seed steward of Imagining Learning, and a lot of different things too. Um, mm -hmm. I was just gonna say I've been studying crowdfunding um, prior to uh, my work with Charlie and uh, our work with Incited. And what I really like about um, Incited is just their kind of overview of knowing all the different sites that are out there and um, trying to really make a niche um, for people who are doing things outside of the conventional um, traditional education system and I think there isn't a, a program for these type of other uh, place for these types of groups yet until inside it came and it's actually something that I was had been thinking about starting myself years in the last couple of years as I thought about opening a school because there isn't any place if you want to open a school to get funding in a way that isn't you know Going and begging non not big nonprofits or begging corporations and businesses to you know donate large sums of money you and this is a way you can get people who are really support you and support the ideas to to become you know members at a very a very low level but together can really make a big difference. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll jump in here too if I may. Great, introduce um, yourself if you would. Yes, this is Alan Burns. Um, I'm the executive director of Open Road, which is a new uh, school alternative for teens in Portland. We work with 11 to 18 year olds um, who don't want to be in school, basically. And so there's principles of unschooling, John Holt um, type stuff uh, involved, where the kids basically get to come in and have their own experience in any way they want to. Uh, now, uh, Alan, I you're yes. open already as a school? As a pilot program, we're open, yeah. We're not okay. fully open. And we're not a school, and I, I was thinking about what David was just saying. Um, the fact that we're not a school actually makes it easier for us to operate, I think, on, a, on kind of a, a lower budget, a lower footprint, smaller footprint. Um, and I think that's one of the things that all this crowdfunding has kind of enabled. Um, you know, going back further than Inside Ed, but going back, you know, it, it enables a lot of small footprint kinds of projects to happen. So we're not a school. We don't have to conform to a lot of what the state would normally want us to do. 
um, where a you know our members are homeschoolers technically, um, and I don't know that we could have done the kind of fundraising we would have needed to do um, through crowdfunding if we were a school. But as something smaller and different than that, we are able to. Um, and so I think in, one of the things that Insight Ed can do, the point I'm trying to make here, is is to uh, encourage smaller projects um, that are that are important and, and viable, and everything doesn't have to be huge. Every time you want to uh, have children learn, you don't have to build a gigantic building, right, and, and staff it with 40 people. So um, that's been exciting for me. I'm Sorry, I don't know if that buzzes for me. It's okay. I think we'll manage with it wherever it's coming from. Um, so, so look, I'm I, I'm trying to hear this from a listener's point of view, and I, I think somebody may be wondering. Okay, could you tell me what the three things are and the four things are? Um, so let's introduce uh, the the um, the campaigns that are going on right now, um, and we'll start. Let's start with yours, Alan, and so sure. just keep talking a little bit. Um, keep it brief. Um, don't give your whole elevator spiel right now. Um, <laughs> spiel, um, but uh, and then and then we'll 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 get over to um, to Turner and and Claire over there and get them involved in the conversation too. Wonderful. So, Alan, what's you started your campaign on Friday? I think is that right? No, we started ours. Oh, you started uh, before. A few That's weeks right. ago. Yeah, you guys started a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. So what is your campaign, and, and what is Open Road in general? Well, like, uh, Open Road, again, we're, it's, an, it's a learning center for teens um, that is not a school. So we serve 11 to 18-year-olds. Um, they become homeschoolers. And we're not generally working with people who have been homeschoolers, although they're certainly welcome. But our, our mission really is to, to help kids who are miserable in school don't necessarily realize there's an option for them to learn without school and for them to still have a successful life, a happy life, um, without school to show them that there is an alternative and to provide that alternative. So that's that's what we try to do. Um, and your campaign and, specifically? Yes, the campaign, uh, we're just, you know, for us, we just, we have capital needs. I mean, we need to pay people, we need to lease space, we need to um, buy some materials. And so uh, for us, it's a more general, you know, I know that for David and Charlie, and they'll talk about this, you know, every X amount of dollars gets them to another city where they can do another listening session, which is really important. For us, our campaign, um, we've been asking, uh, the target is $7,500. We are about $1,500 shy of that now, and with about 12 days to go. And how really... Long the, how long was the campaign, Alan? What was the total length? We did 33 days, and the, the odd number there was really just to be able to begin and end both on a weekend. Um, just to try to capture people when they're most attentive. Um, so we, we wrap it up at uh, the end of Memorial Day weekend. I think the Monday of Memorial Day weekend is the last day. Of Memorial Day. So it sounds like you're going to make it. I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it, yeah. I think, we're gonna I think you it. are too. <laughs> we had, a, we had a, real, a real big uh, donation from a friend who came through today, and I've, I know I've got a couple others who are intending to, and then just haven't yet. So I, I yeah, think and Alan, you're, you're moving into the... the, the Final push of your campaign, and, and typically yes. there's a there's a big upswing in donations right there at the end where you're, you're you got your early bird friends already, but the procrastinator friends come in at the end. So and that's uh, what you keep telling me. <laughs> I'm right. optimistic. I'm optimistic. So let's hear from 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 Charlie and David about your campaign. You're the ones who just started Friday, I think. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, we have a, a organization called Imagining Learning. And as many of you are aware, young people are not being invited mostly around the country into the conversation about how to change education. And we believe they have a tremendous amount of wisdom to share in that area about how to transform it. So we do listening sessions with uh, teenagers from 13 to 18 years or 19 years old all over the United States. These are three-hour sessions where we uh, basically give them a blank slate and we say if you could create a learning journey the way you would love it how would you, how would you do it with no interference and no obstacles in your way and the way the students do that is 
uh, they paint their visions, and you can see a painting back behind me here. If you're, oh, <laughs> I saw that. I was wondering what was behind you. Yeah, I'm actually in a, I'm in an aquarium. <laughs> so um, these paintings are co-created by four students in a group. Uh, we usually do about eight in each listening session, so we get two paintings. Each painting contains a series of themes of what young people thought were really important. And as we do this all over the country, the themes begin to come out. And a set of themes begins to emerge um, uh, from different, you know, from all looking at all the paintings that are done. And that represents what we're calling a national collective voice of what young people have to say about how they would transform education. So in 2015. So Charlie, 20, where, do, where do the paintings end up? Yeah, can we see? What? Are where, they, they, where do the paintings uh, uh, reside? Where do they you live? You can see all of the paintings are on our website at www.imagininglearning.us. But, where does, but the, where does the actual physical one go? Right, right oh, now, they're, they're in store. The, Charlie's storing them safely, beautifully. <laughs> and um, But our, our goal is to have them be um, a major exhibition in Washington, D.C., and then tour around the country, um, using them to spark conversations, intergenerational conversations, so not just the young people talking, but using them as a spark to start conversations in communities all around the country. So that will be our next step after we do our <laughs> initial say, tour. That's not, that's not where you're fun funding this time, right? No, this time we're funding <laughs> the... We, we, have, we have 35... We're actually... 37, 38 communities, just a couple have joined us in the last week, um, who have asked us to come and do these listening sessions with their, with their communities. A lot of students, um, as you, if you watch our video, you'll see Charlie talking on the phone with um, a 15-year-old in Houston, Texas, that called us and asked us to come to her community. Um, she wanted us to come to her school. And so we have, to, we have to go to these communities. They asked us, but right now we don't have the money to get there. So... Um, this crowdfunding campaign is to help us raise the funds to do these listening sessions. And we've so done we, we've done 20 listening sessions so far, predominantly yeah. in the West Coast and in the South. And I can just tell you that the uh, there's they're all appreciative in nature, and the wisdom and the beauty of the passion and the ideas that come from the young people who participate is just phenomenal. So. To do about, we want to do about 50 more around the U.S. before we end up um, launching the exhibition and the education conference at the same time, so that we can announce um, all at once what the findings were from the paintings themselves. So what the national collective voice is asking for, and at the same time bring young people from all over America into probably Washington D.C. where we'd launch it to have inter intergenerational dialogues and perhaps listening sessions themselves with adults who are educators and policy makers and teachers and anyone else concerned uh, so, together so that we can begin to really have meaningful dialogue that brings young people to the table in a way that they are not being invited right now. So it seems you, I just want, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just trying to get an idea of when you might be doing that in D.C. Um, well, part of it depends on fundraising. Right. But, uh, <laughs> uh, our goal is 2015. Um, okay. Uh, because we've got, you know, we could not, we could do 30 or 35 this year, potentially. But it takes, you know, we try and do them in a series like a tour, like we just finished doing a tour through the South and. Nice. Um, now we've just had this explosion of communities from all over the country come and prior to this um, we just self-funded it out of our pocket so now we're like we've got to be able to finish. Well you just got um, another one so. <laughs> Yay! I'm, I'm definitely on board. I love it. Yeah. Well so, great. Okay. Well, can I, Send can us I ask your contact info right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have a, a oh. general crowdfunding question. And, yeah. and, but 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 it, but then I want to get you'll see, um, which is which is um, you guys have a real vision that's going for a couple few years, right? Um, yeah. How did you fine tune that, and how did you decide to fine tune that to what you're actually asking for in this 
funding cycle. Well, so, you know, I can kind of talk about that, um, or I mean, Alan can too. But I mean, for us, it was a. I mean, we can't really move forward unless we have the money to go do these tours, and so we looked at it that way. Like, what do we need to do these um, to do the communities that have already asked us, and um, and then we just tried to tell our story in a way that um, shared our scope, but at the same time made it immediate so that um, people realize that what this is funding right now is these listening sessions. These, you know, what we at the time we said 30, 35 um, listening sessions that we had already planned, and um, and me and Charlie have been working on budgets and uh, fundraising ideas for a long time, and this really was what we thought was the best way to create the kind of initial spark that will help us to do any other fundraising and uh, that we might need so to do give the details what what are you asking for how far along are you how many days are you doing this we are do we do i think we are did 39 days we are um, ending june 13th um, we are asking for $25,000 which would be cuz it costs about um, $500 uh, give or take for a listening session um, just be, mostly because of travel and just the supplies and the energy it takes to um, to organize them, but uh, so that would that would fund uh, fifty listening sessions um, minus whatever costs to you know um, for the website and just additional costs. And so twenty, so it's we have uh, right now we've we've raised we just hit our ten percent mark um, or just went over it. So we're like we're at in between we're right around twenty seven. A hundred dollars. So we have a while to go, and uh, we have thirty days, and um, we're hoping things like this help us to, to get a little bit of energy and uh, get some um, funding. Cool. You know that that number going up, up, and up. One thing I'd like to add to that, Paul, is that um, I receive no compensation for this. I haven't since I started it. I won't in the future. Um, David will get some money, but 99, probably 90 to 95 percent of this is for our travel expenses to go mm -hmm. and do the listening sessions. So um, that's really important to, to me that people know that this money is going directly to us getting to young people all over the country. Cool. Um, Claire and Turner, I, I, I want to turn to the two of you, um, and we will get to you the voices, I promise. Which, but um, uh, but do you guys want to talk big vision and then small vision? Like you guys have some exciting things going on there. Sure, Once, I'd love to. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so let's start with big vision. Um, Introduce so, yourself a little bit first, Turner. Sure. Sorry, my name's Turner. Um, I'm a junior at MIT right now, studying physics, um, and I've been thinking about this project for about 16 months. Yeah, um, I'm Claire, and I'm a junior at MIT, but graduating this year, and I'll be working on education things next year. I'm majoring in brain and cognitive science, and um, I'm a co-founder of a site called iWire, which is a game to map the brain. So it's essentially tracing neural networks in the brain with the goal of mapping the entire thing, um, and it's turned... Oh, no. I reached out to 133 countries, 65,000 people, and I'm the educational outreach director in our lab so that's how I really first started to get into education saw how excited kids got with something unconventional and um, Turner and I started talking and came up with this crazy plan yeah. that Turner had been thinking about on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro <laughs> yeah. so, Wait, but so, before you get to that will you come back and tell us about that other project yeah, another time um, oh my gosh, that sounds so, so pretty but, much I I saw my first TED talk in the second or the first semester of my sophomore year and it was one of my professors talking about this idea that our personal identities are encompassed in something called our connectome so rather than our genome saying everything about us the idea that we have preferences we have personalities and that's encoded somewhere so he was talking about the fact that we have a hundred trillion connections in our brain and that if we could map all of those we might have a way to start to understand how we think how we perceive and what truly makes us who we are. So I was I was so excited when I saw that talk because I'd worked in a genetics place and I was just like, this isn't everything, you know, where where is everything that defines everybody? So I saw that and I was just starting my major in neuroscience. Um, so I went to his lab and I was like, hey, how can I get involved? And so we started out, um, I was tracing individual neurons and it was 
really tedious, took 50 hours per neuron, and I was just like, this isn't, I mean, it's kind of like, like our initiatives. If we were trying to go about it alone without other people helping, we wouldn't be able to go anywhere fast. So then we, we were thinking about the game Red or Angry Birds, and we saw that they had 380 years collectively played on the game in one day at the peak. Of, so we were just like, what if we could use that for something more than throwing pigs around at, or birds at pigs or whatever it does? So oh, we, uh, by the way, I feel that way when I go to Las Vegas. But go. <laughs> <laughs> right? so, you know, like, if you could take that and harness it for something. So we were like, well, why don't we make a game to map the brain? So we took all of the things that we were doing in our lab, and we we started. We, we first of all had to create um, the whole website, some algorithms to help with building the neurons. So we have computers do part of it, and then people come in, and now pretty much anybody anywhere can play. And so I think because I was the student working in the lab, people started talking to me about going out to schools, and I ended up teaching for the MIT online science, technology, and engineering community last summer. So I had 24 students across the U.S., and I taught them about neuroscience and um, this connectomics field about finding these connections. And that was really, it was, it was really cool for me to see, like, I gave them all the same material, but it was something that, that kind of got them thinking. It wasn't, you know, the, the stereotypical stuff that you get in a classroom. And they all had to do a final project, and they came to MIT to present it, and it was really cool what they did. Um, they all went in totally different directions. And so I just started thinking about, you know, why I, I kind of had the experience myself of sitting at a desk and trying to do all the academic stuff, but I didn't really have a direction. I didn't know what I loved. And then I found this thing, and I started sharing it with other people. And I saw that they loved it too. And it, it was just kind of, it definitely drew me into education a lot more. So that's really where I'm going. In the fall, I'm going to be working. Um, we're working on this game, Eyewire, right now mapping neurons in the retina of the eye. But we're starting a second game, which is mapping a real brain region in um, olfactory cortex, so where we process smells and it links to memory areas. So I'll be using those different platforms in developing curricula um, as kind of interesting ways of getting kids excited about science research and just being able to contribute to something bigger than a, a math problem set or that kind of thing. So, so if yeah. somebody wanted to follow up on this, because we do want to get to your campaign um, yeah, right, for this right. show, how could they follow up on this? Is there a place to, a, yeah, a, a website that we're... iWire.org. So I just put that in our local chat, and I'll put it online now, too. Okay. So iWire.org. Okay, cool. Yeah, so E-Y-E-W-I-R-E. -E. Okay. Got it. So... Yeah, you, you're you're going to be on bicycles, and you there's something about <laughs> right. there's something about Very mentors. <laughs> so go right. for it. Yeah. yeah, so you you said big vision first. So let's start with that. Yeah. So this all came out of the idea um, that we had all found something we really loved to play with um, and learn about. Uh, so so it was mostly neuroscience for Claire. Um, I've been all over the place, but actually a lot of mine had to do with. Um, with uh, actually working in entrepreneurship and product management and this kind of thing, um, really product design. Um, and we've put together a team of 16 people that all really share this belief that that is so much fun and it's so uh, wonderful that everyone in the world should have that experience. Everyone should have the opportunity to pursue a passion. Um, so we came together around this idea and said, okay, how do we give that option to everyone? And we settled on mentorship being absolutely key to... Um, allowing people both the confidence and also the supplies and the direction to pursue something that they are interested in just for the sake of the topic and nothing more. Um, so to make that happen, this summer we are uh, organizing a project called Spokes. Uh, we're biking 4,000 miles across the U.S. from San Francisco to Washington, D.C. Uh, there will be eight people biking with us, and we'll be stopping communities, 10 communities in all, in partnership with Teach for America, or sorry, working with Teach for America to offer learning festivals and then help connect uh, 25 to 50 projects over the course of the summer to mentors to test out our system and see if it really does help people tackle a project of their own. Um, yeah, so the, and the main idea is like we'll have both the facilitator at the school, so we're working right now with Teach for America teachers who can continue to work with the students and then also a mentor who can provide inspiration from somewhere else who's interested in a similar area and is excited about the work that they're doing. And I, I was really interested in the painting thing that you were showing because our 
our whole idea right now is if you go in and just tell someone like hey come up with something cool it's pretty hard just to right. just to come up with that so we're we're all presenting these things that we've been excited about and it, it's going to be very hands on and kind of project based things and the thought is at the end of each different session we're going to ask students to write down just something that came to mind in each of the sessions and then throughout the day build this like wall of ideas so kind of almost like an art piece as well and then at the end we want to draw those ideas from the wall and then Turner because he's really into this kind of project building and breaking down something into into like manageable chunks that you can actually take on um, we were thinking that we could take these ideas and have the kids start to build feasible projects that they could pursue from that. So instead of just like ideating actually how, how to realize that idea. Um, and so at that point that's where we think that the mentorship is going to be a really important thing. So we have, you know, like someone, like we, we talked to one guy who was really into film when he was younger but he didn't have much direction um, because he lived in Ohio and there wasn't too much film industry there. And he said that he got to college and he'd known since he was, what, eight, he said? I don't remember, but yeah. Young, that he wanted to do film. But then once he got to school, he had all these other things to focus on and he felt like there was a really steep learning curve. And he was like, I wish, you know, now I know some people who are working in L.A. on different kinds of things. I wish I had been exposed to them earlier. So now that we have all of these materials and, like, ed tech resources to make connections almost anywhere, why not match the people who who can help one another learn. And I think it also it's reciprocal, like the mentor gets something as well, because like you were saying, we can really learn from the kids' visions. So, yeah, that's hey, generally. One thing, one thing I just want to jump, jump in really quickly. I have to leave, and I want to apologize for mm -hmm. having to leave early, but we had one group in our listening sessions paint a giant tree in their painting Oh. And then they drew all of these young, these people, not just young people, but people underneath the tree in different groups. And basically their concept was open classes, free to anyone, all day long. All you did was come up to the tree, paint a sign that you're teaching or not, or you know, a class somewhere around the tree, yeah. and then bang. That that was the way their education went, and it was from five to ninety-five. You know, so that's awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, well, so good Charlie, luck to you guys. We, um, and so if you when you have to leave, that's cool. Uh, so very specifically, when your Kickstarter launches, what will you be asking for, Charlie and Turner, and and how long, Claire, and Claire, what's your campaign? Claire. I'm sorry, yeah. Claire uh, and Turner. Okay, yeah, so, um, Hi. see you, Charles. Hi. Um, yeah, nice to meet you. Make sure we get together. <laughs> absolutely. Nice. Yeah, you guys we'll should absolutely them. bike into the towns that they're doing their listening thing. It would Asheville, be North Carolina. Oh, we would love so to. So much fun. Where, what state are you based in? Asheville, North Carolina. And oh. I've got, I got a 21-acre mountaintop, mountains property that would love to embrace you for as long as you want to come. Oh, Charlie, we'll Charlie, find they're on everything down there. That right? sounds awesome. Charlie, All they're up. on bikes. You just said mountain. Do you realize? But that's okay. <laughs> We're up for oh, the I thought they're tough, man. That's no good. Okay. <laughs> I'm in Portland too, so we're we're by we're kind of bi coastal. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'd love to host you. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. So your Kickstarter campaign. And then yeah. Let's so okay, so so um, the first thing to lead into this is we've actually raised money from a lot of other sources as well, mm -hmm. uh, mostly grants around MIT. And so um, what the Kickstarter campaign is for is not for our supplies, but to go directly to the student projects. So we're actually raising an additional amount of funding on Kickstarter. The goal is ten thousand dollars to go directly to the student project and help them actually get something done that costs more than they might be able to put out of pocket or more than their school might happen to have in the back room. Right. Um, so it's really a way of getting someone who says, I want to build a model rocket from the stage of drawing something on a piece of paper to the point where they can actually go out with a teacher behind the school or in some field and do this and, and see what it's like and follow it through. Right. Um, so we'll be funding student projects for about 100 to $200 each, depending on supplies needed. Um, and obviously that'll vary depending on the project. Uh, but it's a it's really a bonus for the kids, and it'll make it a lot more real. Yeah, 
And the other projects that we talked about earlier, you can find at insighted.org. Your project, you can find at spokesamerica.org. Is that correct? That's yeah, exactly that's right. The Kickstarter, as soon as it, it's up, will be there. Um, or who knows? Maybe there will be an incited sometime in the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that'll all be available there. Cool. So Karen and Paul, <laughs> can you guys <laughs> talk about new voices a little bit? And I'll jump in. Because we are, we are actually launching a campaign. Uh, we hope to get it up, up by Friday. Um, and so we want to mention that as well here. And then see what time is left to have whatever. Other, other other conversation. Karen, can you do that for me? <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll jump in, but you're good. So we've, you know, so a lot of you already know Youth Voices, but it's a it's a really powerful um, peer writing platform for students. And I've had the good fortune to be able to work with Paul and his students both online and also to visit his classroom, um, in part through some of my work with um, Peer to Peer University. And we've we've um, been able to award students badges through that platform. And Paul was talking about months ago doing a summer um, a summer program for students to um, be able to have them have this experience in the summer of really connected learning and following their passion. And the funding sort of didn't quite line up. And so we all said, let's do some kind of crowdfunding thing because I, I feel like this work is just like too great to not happen this summer. So we will be launching on Inside Ed this Friday and hope everybody will come visit. It'll be all over Twitter and if you can't contribute, help spread the word. Um, we're on a pretty short time frame. We're hoping to get um, funding to have 15 um, high school students come together in New York for three weeks to do this work and then we'll also um, Paul's going to be having teachers join him so that we can replicate this across other communities and then we're also um, hoping to make a short movie about this to help spread the word about connected learning and sort of how powerful this work is. And I'll thanks, just jump in. Okay, can I jump in Paul Allison? Go ahead Paul. Oh great, thanks. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Paul O. I'm with the National Writing Project. I'm based in Berkeley, although I'm sitting in my bedroom in Oakland, California right now. Um, it is still light out here on the West Coast. So I just wanted to add to that great description by Karen uh, by saying that uh, one of the things that I think is really fascinating about Youth Voices is, first of all, it has incredible longevity. So, you know, in this kind of disposable um, environment that we sometimes see online. You know, Youth Voices has has had this amazing persistence as a youth publishing platform. Say I'm old, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, your words, not mine. And I am old too because I remember the beginning of Youth Voices. Yes, you do. Um, and I would say, you know, one, one thing that uh, Paul has uh, said to me in, in his description of Youth Voices um, in talking to a teacher who actually we're doing work with in the Oakland Unified um, Public Schools here is that he talks about youth voices as ideally being a, a, a youth's uh, like writer's notebook, essentially. It's the digital version of a writer's notebook. So it's a space where um, you know, kids have the opportunity in, in an ideal world to, to really explore um, both themselves, you know, their identities, um, but also follow their passions and really pursue what's um, of interest to them in connection with peers um, and those peers might be you know other um, kids from their classroom and it may be youth from around the country and you know and, and that has really resonated uh, you know because I, I now say that a lot Paul just so you know and that has resonated with a lot of teachers uh, because mm -hmm. I think so often um, teachers take uh, spaces and, and some and, and I would argue co-opt um, online spaces and then use it for these academic purposes that I think are not um, you know, necessarily authentic, whatever authentic means, but it's not, you know, I, I think it doesn't necessarily, um, you know, provide the sort of um, freedoms that I think Youth Voices does for, you know, the kids who I've seen interact in that space. And when I say freedom, I mean, you know, freedom to really explore and to, to go in different directions based on interest um, and, and based on conversation, basically, um, among the youth themselves and uh, in collaboration with adults as well. Very cool. Um, so, yeah, so very specifically, we're thinking as we broke things down that to the money we would still need was 
about $1,000 per kid. So we're looking for $15,000. Um, we're trying to do that in 30 days. Otherwise, we won't be able to recruit everybody we need to do this. <laughs> so we're, we're having to do this really fast. Um, and as is our way, once we have our local kind of thing going on, um, we are a totally open network, and we will be inviting any other summer thing that's going on to try to try to connect um, summer camps throughout the country in other writing projects and and other things as well. So um, that's um, that's some of our thinking, and we'll keep talking about that over the next thirty days. You'll find out. Um, I think. Um, but so I want to do uh, ten minutes here, and we'll be finished. Um, and, and I want to try to kick it back to Insight Ed, if you guys can. And so, how did you guys end up with um, with these interesting projects? <laughs> that is a that's an interesting question. Well, um, the uh, the egotistical answer is I happen to know a lot of interesting people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, uh, and, and their names are Alan and David and Charlie <laughs> and, yeah. and Paul. Um, That's cool. Um, the less egotistical answer is that um, you, you know we we wanted to start with projects that we're really passionate about and that we have some personal connection to, and it just so happens that um, Alan, Charlie, and David are friends of mine, and um, they had a need, and so it just was the most serendipitous thing. And uh, since then, we have. Um, been really fortunate to be connected with uh, Paul and some other campaigners who've come our way through David and our Facebook contacts. And um, yeah, and that, know, that kinda... I think one of one of the things that I've heard from a couple. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just going to say that you know it really Sorry. mirrors um, crowdfunding in general. You have to start with your core people, and then expand out from there. So you know we've started with these great quality people that we're connected to already and then you know slowly but surely um, you know other people are coming in um, you know Paul you've been a, a, a great addition you know to Insight Ed and we're you know so excited about your campaign launching this Friday and you know the, all the people that will learn about us through what you're doing you know so we started with our with our core people and you know uh, I can't wait to see how far we can go yeah and I, I was just gonna add that um, you know, I've heard from a couple of people who've learned about our site through uh, David and, and Facebook and different social connections that um, they're they're really attracted to what we're doing because it seems like we're we're a little bit um, a little bit edgier, a little bit less um, I guess less inside the box, and I and that's that's exactly what we're going for. You know, we we really want to um, welcome all people as educators. We really, you know. My, my philosophy as a teacher is that all people are teachers and that we, we really want to support um, every, every person's ability to educate if they, if they choose to. So. so a lot of people have been sitting and listening, so please jump in. What have you been thinking? <laughs> David, you came up. I, 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 I agree. I agree with, um, <laughs> with Jamie. And the, the interesting thing is that, you know, we all have a lot of overlapping networks, and that's what's uh, exciting about working with people who are trying to change education and make it a better place for teachers and students and communities. Um, but a lot of us have not not wanted to go the more traditional route of you know going to people like Bill Gates or going to you know some of the big organizations that fund work, or not wanting to compromise our values and our mission to be funded by somebody like Gates or be funded by you know someone where you have to jump through all the hoops just to get the money and so this is I, I really think that there is a, a transformative act by donating to campaigns like this you you are you are saying to the world that there's a different way to support um, good projects you don't have to be funded by Gates you don't have to be have some Brand name or some corporate sponsorship to to do good work. You can you can do it with people. I mean, it's it's not like this is new. I mean, Barack Obama campaigned on this idea of having small donations um, fund his campaign, even though that might have been more of a you know 
fiction than it, you know reality. But I mean, it's true. I mean, you get every what we've been saying is every every donation's a ripple of positive change in this world. And so you know, just by donating even a dollar, you're signing on saying like this is a great great thing that the world needs. And mm -hmm. so that's what I've been doing to campaign helping this helping people realize that you know no donation's too small. And you know, even I traded the other day. Yesterday, I traded a. I'm going to create a doing a little bit of bartering. I, I told somebody I would create uh, an internet meme for them if they would donate some money, just as a way to you know. It's just I just want their name on our supporters list. You know, even if they can't <laughs> afford very much, it's it it means something to me and it means something to all the youth voices that we're going to be connecting with over the next year and a half to say like we have a thousand people gave their money to to make it possible so that you could be a part of this. And that to me is as 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 powerful as anything. There's my, there's my Thank you, David. Um, my, <laughs> others. I'll other thoughts? In. Good. Um Hi hi was, Monica. Hi. Yes. I've been here. It's too, it was full, so it I couldn't full. Even let me in. Um Eunice a uh, Nobel Prize winner spoke at school and he talked about um, how we write science fiction and it's come true and so we need to start writing social fiction so that it will come true. So here's my social fiction, you know, um, all the stuff that you guys are doing, we shouldn't be having to crowdfund for it. I mean, there's plenty of money out there and there's plenty of need for this to just be happening through the funding that we already have. So I don't know if you guys knew, but, but um, there was an Alternatives to Compulsory School Conference at Harvard, and um, Peter Gray and Pat Franga spoke there. And I mean, to me, that's part of it, that the things that they have in there, you guys wouldn't need to be crowdfunding. And so, so then you might think, well, then what would happen to um, the crowdfunding that we're, we're starting? Um, well, maybe that would be that could be an alternative way that we take care of our funding that we're given by the government or if, if it doesn't work out that way. So just wanted to share that. Um, I love all that you guys are doing. I think it's spot on to what's needed today. Um, what I don't like is that we're having to panhandle ourselves. You know, it's so. I have a little follow up to that, if that's all right. Great. Um, yeah. Turner. So. so yeah. I, I very much agree with the idea that there's a lot of other funding out there and we should definitely be able to take advantage of it. Um, I never think of these two things as one or the other. Um, mm -hmm. I think that actually what we're seeing develop is kind of a system where you can go out and say, hey, you know, I have this idea, I've been thinking about it. Let's see if the, the world will give me a couple of dollars. And then if it's realized and if this is sort of like a democratic, like, almost a vote, you know, that yes, we like it. Mm -hmm. Now you can go out and, and then, then you can sort of tap into the tens and hundreds of millions of dollars that are out there floating around. And I, I really like the complement of the two. I think it's a really wonderful way of assuring that you both can be sustainable um, through uh, a more established system or a larger funding base or by forming a school. I know, I don't know if you guys don't know the Sprouts here in Cambridge or in Somerville. They're, they're founding a school right now after running sort of a bootstrap thing for years. I think that kind of thing is wonderful. I, I, I very much agree with your point that we should never have to rely on this, but I also definitely want to respect the crowdfunding platform as a wonderful one to go with. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah, the, I, I think the, that's... Good. Go ahead, Paul. I, I just just a quick um, point to follow up on that is that it's the team that you get together to create the crowdfunding um, that's been interesting. Like your your group of sixteen has been as has been probably a, a big part of the process. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's been great having oh. just having people join. Well, we, we went down to um, an event where we were just looking to talk to people about being mentors um, for the Spokes Project, and it was with a group that, uh, kind of an entrepreneurship group at MIT, and we came back with a couple of guys in the car, and they started talking about something they'd been working on, and we hadn't told them about Spokes yet, and it turns out it was, like, exactly in line with what we were thinking, so now they're going to be um, part of our, kind of, headquarters crew this summer and they're working in Cambridge so we'll be sending them all the videos we have the student projects and they're going to be helping match kids with mentors and mm -hmm. they just they joined on like we're meeting with them in a couple of minutes actually and it it's just really cool how 
people seem to all engage and respond with this kind of thing because yeah. we can all relate to how great it's been in our own lives. Um, so yeah, and I think I love the inside ed idea because when we were trying to decide what platform to use, um, we talked with a friend of ours who did a Kickstarter and was very successful and so he he said that he absolutely thought we should go with Kickstarter over Indiegogo but we kind of had to twist it a little bit because there's no education. Like it, it's mm -hmm. kind of tricky to find which category you do. So we ended up choosing to say that we were a design project looking into education <laughs> design, um, which is a little bit of a design in itself. But I think it, it's great <laughs> that there's going to be an actual like a place to do these kinds of projects because you know people who it's people's educations that get them to kind of come up with the ideas that create the Kickstarter campaigns outside of education. So. There has to be that that starting point, and um, yeah. So I love the idea. Mm -hmm. Really excited about it, Jamie. Thank you. Well, yeah, I just I just wanted to um, to go back to that idea of of how crowdfunding can be a tool to kind of a, a be almost like an experimental space, and I, I think that's that's really important. It's it's something that we talk about as 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 a team all the time. How you know you know what Turner said is like if uh, if we have these sort of small niche projects going on that maybe aren't ready for prime time, or they or they they are, but they're they're kind of um, on the fringe or or um, so unique that nobody's seen anything like them before, we're a way to kind of incubate that and say, you know, we're gonna we're gonna honor that this has a possibility, and we're gonna let the people decide, and um, and then it it can become something um, that can spread. That's something that we're incredibly passionate about. As a matter of fact, we're we're working to find a way to turn our what what will become an online community space into uh, a place where people can replicate good ideas, and and they're already doing it. You know, um, Alan is replicating um, an idea that that started in Massachusetts called North Star. Um, you know, a, a woman that I was speaking to today who's going to be starting a campaign in June just spoke to Alan um, because. Uh, her name's Leslie. Um, she she saw Alan's campaign and liked the way he was running his campaign and wanted to learn more about it. And we we just think that's amazing. And that's that's what educators should be doing is helping each other and not feeling isolated, not feeling like um, like they they don't have have anything to share. And I I think that uh, sometimes the system makes us feel that way, and we're we're striving to turn that around. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to, to add to that just real briefly um, to what the last few of you have said. Um, and I guess, Monica, going back to your point, and hi, Monica, I haven't met you live before. Um, the, the, the thing that I really love is, is you know, you say, oh, you've got to go hat in hand to everybody, and you've got to ask your friends for money and how hard that is, and it is. It's not fun to do that on one level, but on the other hand, what it does to me is those folks. Well, I'm not only going around in education circles. I'm getting outside of that and going around to my entire social circle to ask for the donations. Well, when I ask for the donations, obviously I have to tell the story of what we do. And that engages non-educators and people who aren't necessarily thinking mm -hmm. stuff like we all are. It engages them around those issues. And then if they come to Incited and they make a donation on my site and they see some other campaigns on Incited, I mean, this all, all sort of starts to be a, a, a bit of a, a, of a rolling snowball. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully more people are gaining more perspective on what's going on in the world of education and the kinds of changes that are afoot. Um, right now, I feel like some of the stuff is on the margins, but hopefully it becomes more and more mainstream. And I think that us getting uh, these campaigns out there to the general public is a way that that, that happens. And, and you, know, you engage people partly by getting them to do something. $5 in the kitty gets them to do something, or $5 or whatever. Making a $1 donation gets them to do something. They're making an active stand. Um, very, very quickly, David. I'm sorry. Well, I was just, I was just going to add, like, sorry. thank you. I, I agree with what, what um, Monica was saying, but also just to push back a little bit. Um, the reason that Paul, Peter Gray and, and those guys were able to, to do what they did at Harvard was because they had name recognition and they had they had inside connections. I mean, Kirsten Olson's husband works at Harvard. So, like, that's great that they were able to do that, but also 
they have name recognition. And this platform and Kickstarter and all the platforms allow people that don't have the notoriety or the power to take a good idea and give it voice and give it, put it out there and get it funded and get it started. I mean, even if we were going through traditional startup kind of incubators or whatever, we'd still be out there panhandling, which I think is a pretty horrible way to talk about it, actually, because I think what it is and um, is we're, we're, we're asking, we're, ask, we're, we're putting out into the universe a good idea, and we're saying, we believe in this, we, we think you should believe in it, and if you do, give, it, give back by supporting it with your money. And it's, it makes it a democratic uh, campaign, not just a, I have to beg the people that are powerful to like my idea and to fund me, which I think is even in nonprofit circles is what you do. You end up begging the people like Gates or the, the people to, to like your idea and keep it, and then you're always on eggshells until they fund you again, which is not a really, is a completely broken model. And, you know, this is a way to at least change it, you know, change it and say, wait, people can fund it. People can support what they, they believe in. They don't need advertising. They don't need big, you know, big names to support projects that are good for the world. So I'm kind of glad I misspoke because I got to hear you guys' hearts. I, um, I believe crowdfunding is going to be the economy of the future, I, you know, so it's more decentralized. My, what gets me up out of bed every morning is the issue of equity and knowing that people can't get to those places. And I wasn't really seeing Peter Gray's voices out there at Harvard. They're trying to break down so that everybody knows about the things you guys are doing. So it is equitable tomorrow. You know, if they want to join Open Road, they can tomorrow. They don't have to wait five years until they hear about it. So anyway, glad I misspoke. Cool. Dang Good. passion. Good dialogue, folks. That's fine. Um, that's that's great. Um, Peter, I wanted to give you a, a last chance to say, I, I, right at the beginning of the campaign, you sent me a lot of resources. Can can we put those up along with this broadcast and people can see them? Or yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, I uh, posted those uh, the links on, to all those documents um, on uh, on sorry, the I, the Titan Pad. The yeah. Titan Pad, yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. Good. We'll we'll pick them up there then. Great. Okay. But yeah. any last thoughts? And then I, I want to get some dates from Turner because I don't think we got any dates from you, Turner. Like when you guys are doing this. But any last thoughts, Peter? And we we should finish in one minute. I promise. <laughs> um. Well. Uh, again, we're excited. We're excited to see uh, you go live this Friday. Um. I think. Uh, you know. From what we've seen, you know, your team. Uh, and your crowd, you know, you're you're custom made for 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 crowdfunding. So you know, we're predicting success for you. And uh, um, what you know, uh, one aspect of what we're doing is we're not just about the funding. We want to be able to follow you beyond funding. We want to have you get what you need to get to 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 carry out you know this program this summer but then we want you to come back to insight ed and talk about the learning outcomes you know um, we don't want to lose sight of the fact that we're raising money um, not just for raising money but you know that there's outcomes that everyone's working for and unlike crowdfunding platforms elsewhere you know we want to stay in, uh, in close touch with the people that we're working with so they can share their stories their successes of how that money was was uh, spent, um, and and the great learning outcomes that, that are a result of that. Interesting. So Turner, I did want to. I I think we didn't say, but um, people could. So all the all the campaigns, the three campaigns we've talked about, and a couple of others, are at ed, um, Insight, I N C I T E Ed E D dot org, um, and Turner and uh, Claire's project is over at uh, <laughs> spokesamerica.org. Um, when are you uh, leaving San Francisco, and what's your goal for getting to the East Coast? Yeah, um, OK, so a couple of important dates. Our first day running this program is June 10th. We'll be running a class actually in Oakland um, with uh, a, a school there. Uh, it sounds like we'll have about 100 kids. What school? Is um, so it's not finalized. It sounds like we'll oh, be at okay. uh, Fremont High School, which uh, you're kidding. Fremont in 
Oakland. So I, I, I don't I'm know. part of that. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Yeah, exactly. There's a, there's a wonderful teacher on Youth Voices um, from yeah. Fremont. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. I'd love to connect with and you about Paul that. Paul works there. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. That be, yeah, that'd be wonderful. It'd be a lot of fun. Um, so we should be there on the 10th. Um, and then I would just like to extend an invitation to all of you guys on this call um, to join us that night for our send-off party. Um, if any of you guys are in the San Francisco area, it'd be super awesome to meet you in person. Um, and that'll be that afternoon and evening. Um, nothing fancy, just hang out in the park and talk to people. <laughs> uh, and then our goal to get back to uh, the East Coast is D.C. on August 27th. So it is quite literally all summer. Um, and we'll have more intermediary dates on our website. Uh, I know another important one is we'll be in Denver on uh, Ju uh, July 12th. So that's another set date at this point. Um, and I'm not going to remember the others, but they'll be up soon. We'd love to check in with you on TTT sometime. On your that would be wonderful. Yeah, that'd be cool. We'll have a lot of content going up over the summer, videos, photos from all along, and, and it'd be great to be able to update you guys, okay. especially after a couple of these, and we know how they're going. Very cool. So thank you all um, for, for this. It was uh, really interesting um, to learn about. Um, we meet here every Wednesday night um, at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m., Pacific time, and uh, we meet over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network. Thanks to Dave Cormier and um, Jeff Lebo for all of that. Jeff just Jeff Lebo is in in uh, Korea, and he just made this video of this. Anyway, I'll t you check Jeff Lebo out. He's doing some funny things over there in South Korea. Um, anyway, <laughs> but he he helped us uh, create this this network, and we want to thank him for that. Please uh, check in to all these sites we've been talking about, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Paul. Thanks a lot, everyone.